Rob Shahady is such an iconic name on Australian television. Thank you so much for your time today, Rob. Habibi. I wanted to dive into the early stages before you got into comedy and acting. From humble beginnings, you were a rugby player and dabbled in a bit of rugby. How did you get involved in that? It was accidental, similar to my acting career and comedy career. At school, St Pat Stratford, it was compulsory to play a sport, so I, I actually put down soccer and my brother changed it in year five and told me to play rugby. I look back, maybe I could have been the next Ronaldo. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, so I stuck with rugby and uh, my mum didn't like me playing it because it was too rough and said it wasn't for me and uh, it was good for my brother because he was big. Up to year 11, year 12, played for the top team at school, the first 15, which was a big thing. Uh, made it in year 11, which was a big milestone in rugby at St. Pat's to make it in year 11. Australian schoolboy selectors started watching and kept an eye on our team and saw me and, and then I got invited to try out and I got selected to play for Australia. So I started taking it seriously. I also played f for New South Wales under 19s and also under 21s and first grade rugby. So I actually thought this is my career, I'm going to be a rugby player, I'm going to play, f play for the Wallabies. So I was actually kind of you know, like one step away from the Wallabies. So it was a dream. I got close to it, but I didn't make it due to injuries. And you said Rob Shahadi is an iconic name in the acting comedy world in Australia, but the, the name Shahadi is actually an iconic name in rugby. If you look up the history of a relative of mine who also captained the Wallabies, I was trying to follow that tradition there, but that door closed around the age of 26, 27. I had some bad injuries. And then, yeah, the acting game popped up at around the age of 19, 20. So being in rugby and having that name in rugby in the family for so long and transitioning to comedy, how did you make that transition? Yes, yeah, so it was just accidental. So I was working with my brother on the building side. We had a close family friend filming Fat Pizza at the time, the first series, so no one knew what it was. Probably three quarters in, they needed a couple of big ethnic looking guys and he asked my brother to try out and my brother's told me to come along. We went down to SBS and they asked me to try out because I was a big guy too. So my brother walked into Paul Fennick's office. He did whatever he did, walked out. And then I went in, I just did my thing. He told me to act woggy. So I actually impersonated George Capanyaris's voice from Acropolis Now, who played the character Mimo. He was like my idol back then. And we're close friends now. And then I got a call saying that you made the scene and you need to come to Macquarie Uni at this time, it was at night to be part of a scene, which I had no idea what to do. It was a road rage scene. It was like one guy pulls out a knife, one guy pulls out a bat, and then I had to pull out a bow and arrow from the boot. And Paulie said to me, the director, just ad lib something. So I pulled out the bow and arrow and I said, do you know who I am? I'm the Lebanese Rambo, you know, and I was angry. And then everyone was laughing. The cameraman was shaking, laughing, and uh, they called cut and I had to do it again. And, so I, obviously I impressed them that night. Oh, maybe a week or two later, I get a call to come back. So here we go, I'm, I'm doing it again. And I ended up on, in a scene with Tahir, my good friend who I've been friends with ever since. And he was in, a, in the car with me. So I'm now sitting with Tahir and there was no script. It was just, we were just told, given a bit of a theme of what the scene's about and, and just ad-libbed. So I had to try to drive. I had a car next to me with the camera in it. There was no GoPros back then, so it was just a, got a cameraman shooting through the windows. And I had to keep at a certain speed, look forward, try to do these lines at the same time. So it was very challenging for someone who's never done stuff like that. And, um, and he really liked the way Tahir and I bounce off each other. And the story from Tahir is that he was filming with a, a Greek guy all throughout the whole series and then he turned up and that Greek guy wasn't there anymore. It was me. So that Greek guy is like the fifth Beatle member who probably looks back in life now and thinks, wow, that big Lebanese guy took my role and that could have been me. I'm sorry, I don't know who the guy is. If you're watching, I'd love to meet you and say sorry. but. Um, yeah, and that was it. The rest was history. And then we just evolved over the years. And that was 1999 when I filmed that scene. And it came out in year 2000. Perfect example that if someone gives you an opportunity, if it doesn't seem attractive, just 
just maybe give it a look, give it a go. You don't know what could come out of it, and and, and look, it, it, something good came out of it. So I can see there's some ethnicity and a mix of diversity. You mentioned Greek, and you mentioned another another guy that did the acting with you. Um, what about things like diversity and, and ethnicity in acting? Do you think that was the right time for it? I think Australia has evolved with multiculturalism over the years, and like I mentioned, Acropolis now was in the 90s. Um, that show was big and everyone embraced it and everyone loved it and everyone fell in love with Greeks. So the beauty of having a, a, an ethnic type of show, if you've never met a Greek family, now you have because you've watched the show and you can laugh along with them. Similar to the TV show I created with Tahir called Here Come the Habibs. You know, like people have thoughts of Lebanese, negative thoughts. I feel it's more positive now since shows like Habibs and that have come out. Uh, we've allowed people to laugh. We've opened the door up to a Lebanese family uh, and they've enjoyed it. They really enjoyed the Habibs. It was, it was a very successful, sh successful show. It was Logan nominated. We had 1.2 million people tune in on the first night. Is that right? That and that's, yeah, and that's the kind of numbers you get for Married at First Sight. So it was a big show. And it actually shows you that there is a big hole in the market. We're not feeding that multicultural market enough. You imagine a blonde Anglo guy walking, to, walking into the offices of Channel 9 saying, I want to do a show called Here Come the Habibs about a Lebanese family who win lotto from the Western Sydney and moved to the Eastern Suburbs. They're going to go, yeah, thanks, mate. But because we walked in, multicultural, it was able to be done. They go, okay, beautiful, yeah. It's the look. I think we've got to create your own work. We created our own work. I've had one audition in my 26 years, which was Fat Pizza, and the rest of my work has been work... I've created and I've created with Tar here and we've done together. So I'm hearing it was the right time for things to happen. You create the opportunities that you want to set up for yourself. So now, what are you up to these days? I'm doing a lot of corporate gigs, stand-up comedy gigs, MC work. In Australia, there's not enough acting work. People always ask me for advice on acting and I always say to them, keep it as a serious hobby, but you've got to do something else. We don't have that market here. There's not enough work, so you've got to reinvent yourself. You've got to do other things. So for me, I make a living from MC work, doing my own comedy show. So right now, I've, Tahir and I created Once Upon a Time in Lebanon. So we've done five sold out shows at the Enmore Theatre. We've sold out a show at Melbourne. So on that topic of just creating your own work, uh, you've done that. It's a clear example that you've done that in your career. Yeah. What are some building blocks and some advice you could give to someone else wanting to do that too? Best option would start with stage work because networks at the moment with all the streaming, they're very cautious. When we started Fat Pizza, there was only five channels. Now there's how many channels out? There's probably a hundred channels that we can choose from. And digital and streaming. Plus the air, <laughs> plus YouTube, plus yeah. TikTok. It's endless. So you're really now battling so many more people out there. You know, like there's Instagram stars that are making, getting more publicity than someone on TV. If you want to get into acting and maybe creating a little, little production stage, inviting your family and friends and just letting it build, you've got to get the confidence, you've got to get out there. So it's great you've got all this success on television. What are a couple of ways that you would like to or have given back to the community? I MC a lot of charity events. Um, I'm ba ambassador of uh, Save Our Sons, Special Olympics and a few others that are out there. Um, I'm a bit of a role model as well, especially for like young Lebanese people who are trying to make it in life as well. And I, I love the beauty of comedy. Because of comedy, they feel they know me, they feel they they warm to me quicker. Like I can be walking the streets and they see me and, and they, they, they come up and it's, it's like you've, they've known me forever. A um, little bit different how they'd react to someone who was a bit more of a serious personality. Uh, they're probably a bit more standoffish. But yeah, like, I'm just one of the boys when I'm walking around. So do you see yourself in a lot of the characters you play? No, I'm not like my fat pizza character at all. <laughs> Maybe not that one. <laughs> yeah, no, total opposite to that. Um, but in terms of, say, the mannerisms and the ethnicity that's shown there, is that reflective of the Lebanese culture? With comedy, uh, the characters become very cartoonish. You, you, uh, it's really over the top. Those characters, if you saw, you'd rarely see one of those type of characters walk in the streets. They're, they're out there. Oh, you're making fun of the community. We didn't make fun of the community. In the end, the show, 
actually made Lebanese, uh, Lebanese family look you know, very positive. There was nothing negative. They opened their doors. They fed everyone in the, in the suburb. The, the kids, one went to uni, one was at school. None of them were criminals. So we really changed that portrayal of Middle Easterns on TV. Rob Shahidi, thank you for your words of advice. Anytime. Call me whenever you want. You need advice. I'm here.